Keith is the Managing Director of Loud Communications, a unique South Australian business development agency that works with three simple philosophies. One, advertising doesn't work. Two, marketing doesn't work. And three, public relations doesn't work. He has created therapy at universities by teaching students a different approach to marketing and one that actually works. Keith has worked for a former Deputy Premier as well as two other high profile politicians in South Australia. He was instrumental in the creation of the largest government entity in the state, which he now employs us. With the Australian Dance Theatre, he successfully turned the dying arts dinosaur into an international success. He's also introduced Triple M to South Australia. His agency, Loud, has assisted iconic international brands such as McDonald's, Coke, Vodafone, and Citibank. Impressed? Don't be. He has also worked on some absolute marketing failures for which he accepts uh, full responsibility. Keith is known nationally and internationally as a dynamic presenter, an unforgettable approach to getting his audience to absorb and even support business notions that are often as controversial as they are invaluable. Would you now please fold your arms across your chest, open your minds for the next 18 minutes, no applause please, you may not like what he has to say. Keith Arnold. marketing is there. A few years ago my agency allowed worked with the Department of Trade and Economic Development and we researched the South Australian SME market and we asked them three really interesting questions. Number one, what does advertising mean to you? Number two, what does marketing mean to you? And number three, what does public relations mean to you? The results were, advertising is expensive, marketing is complicated, public relations, what was that? And it started us thinking about what it is this thing that we call marketing, where a four year study program to receive a degree gives you precisely six weeks or six units to study advertising. Absolutely nothing. And many of the theories and the curriculum are so old, they didn't make hamburgers during the time that this course was valid. So not only was marketing seen as being of little use, providing minimal assistance, and about as enjoyable to undertake as a tax audit, it was also viewed as a necessary evil. We don't like it. We don't get much from it, but we still believe we need to do it. Who falls into that category? Brave people. Who doesn't fall into that category? Who's lying to me? <laughs> Thank you for being honest. Who's ever done marketing that's worked? I wish I had my glasses on. 
heart so I can speak to you afterwards. I found a new way of looking at the way that a business structures itself. It's not new to us, but I hope it's new to you. It's really simple. I can teach it to you in 18 minutes. I just need you to do two things. You need to be willing to adjust your vocabulary. All those in favour? Thank you. Exit doors are here and here, by the way. I won't be offended if you leave at any time. The other thing is um, a, a very small and, and quite important thing as well, is you need to change the way that you think massively. And the easiest way to do that is to think about what I'm going to present to you, not as a business owner or manager, or an ex-business owner or manager, but as a person that either has or has had a life partner. Because the principles that we apply in business should be the same as those that we apply in our personal life. As we'll see. So do you agree to adjust your vocabulary and change your thinking massively? Do you need chocolate? <laughs> Step number one. Marketing has been replaced by a thing called MTR. Sexy? It is, isn't it? <laughs> the first term is advertising. We call it messages. See, advertising doesn't sell product. Have you heard that before? Advertising doesn't sell product. Physically can sell a product. Think of any advert that you've ever seen, that you can remember, that you thought was good. Did you buy the product? No. If you were listening to the radio, you were probably in your car. If you were watching TV, you probably weren't in your car. You were probably at home. If you were reading the newspaper, you may have been at work, but you probably weren't in the shops. Agreed? So advertising does one thing and one thing only, and it can do it well or not so well, and that is send a message. The idea of sophisticated advertising is you hear it so often that you just cannot avoid comes to buying something in that category, you cannot avoid that particular brand. Has anyone done that? Has anyone bought McDonald's in the last seven days? Has anyone got Nike shoes on right now? Does anyone know what brand of underpants they have on? Yes. You hand up those two. They're very strange people. And the rest of us that don't know the brand of underwear that we have on us, normal people. <laughs> the reason is quite confusing, really, because most underwear that I've seen or worn has the branding quite prominent on it. Do you agree? Yeah. And we look at it as we put it on. And unless we're less than well endowed, it's something that we're happy to consume. We're happy to look at it. It's not like standing at the arrival. take them off. I don't know about you, but I have a game of basketball. You're much the same. So if the message is there, and that's the brand that we buy, why is it that we do not send the message? Why is it that we think advertising sells a product? It doesn't. It simply generates interest. And that's if it's good advertising. Has anyone here watched a Gruen transfer? Gruen Planet? Gruen, what was the Olympics version? and sweat, thank you. Who thinks that's a good program? Who thinks that it really reveals all of the hideous things that go on in advertising? All of the hideous things that go on in advertising? Who currently works with an advertising agency? Who's aware that every organisation that spends with an advertising agency, every time you buy some form of advertising, print, radio, online, TV, that agency is receiving a commission. Are you all aware of that? Do you know what that commission is? Those of you that are using an agency, are you aware of what percentage? That'd be worth asking. <laughs> so we replace 
advertising with what we call messages, nothing more than that. Think about this in your own business. Every letter you send, every sign you put up, every conversation you have with a customer, every Facebook update that you post, and every tweet, 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 that you tweet, 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 tweet. I haven't got the hang of that one yet. But that's okay, I've heard that Pinterest is the new thing, and that Twitter is going out the door. That's good, isn't it? Please do not tweet any of this information. I have a bet on in the office. I'm not going to tell you what it is, but I have it on. So let's make it really simple. Let's think about our signage. Who has a building that has their signage on it? Prominent. Okay. What does it say? The name of the company. The name of the company. Fantastic. What else does it say? You can't read it, but it says what our sort of mission statement, I guess. It's a casual mission statement. Well, not a statement, such, but a few words about what we do. It's the Britannia Roundabout. The Britannia, because you can't read. Britannia Roundabout. Okay. So the Britannia Roundabout has about 300,000 vehicles yeah. a day. And what you're saying to those 300 vehicles is... Watch the traffic. If you can read this, you've just had an accident. Keith Arnold. saying your company name and a position statement, wears nice shoes. We don't even think when we put a sign together that we can actually get out there and sell some product. What is it that you do, sir? Yeah, financial planning. So you make money for people? Uh, uh, not lately. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> if I saw a sign as I was driving down the road, even at Britannia Roundabout, which I do go past both on a bike and a car daily, if I saw a sign that said, I will make you money, I would probably want to know what was in that building. If, however, I saw a sign that said, What's your company sign? Tynan Mackenzie. Tynan Mackenzie. I have seen that sign. Yeah, I've often wondered if they're Scottish. So, but if I saw a sign that said Tyne McKenzie, I would instantly forget it. How much was that sign, sir? I have no idea, but we can't read half of it. <laughs> no, I, I have no idea. Guilt by association. So, can you see step one? We're not going to call it advertising anymore, we're going to call it messages. And it changes everything. Who has a business card with them? Please take them out of your pocket. Run up to the stage and give them to me. Really quickly, really quickly. Really? See, they can't run it. They, they're not, they're not Do I need to come down there? How many you want? Oh, there's one. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Only if I get yours. Ah! You will afterwards. Thank you. Some people do more than one. Thank you. Pretty important business tool, do you agree? Can sell amazing amounts of products. Is often the first impression, works 24 7, correct? Let's have a quick look at these. <laughs> Sorry, nothing appealed. Step two is what we started off with. Marketing is dead. Transaction is the new buzzword. It's the T of MTR. It is hugely important. Think about how difficult it is for your current clients or customers to buy from you. Who thinks it's easy to buy from you? So marketing, which can be really quite complex, is really just about getting people from sending the message and getting them interested to getting them to purchase. And do you know how difficult it is to get consumers to purchase? Five thoughts, five considerations.
considerations need to be undertaken before they will indeed buy from you. Five things. And do you know, through a 2008 national study, how many grand decisions the average Australian makes every single day? 10,000. Do you believe me? You don't believe me? I love it when people say that. Let's run a little test case. This is me waking up this morning. I wake up in my Peter Alexander pyjamas in my Simmons bed. I put my feet down into a pair of Peter Alexander slippers onto a Westminster carpet. I have a Sanyo clock radio. I've tuned it into Triple M. Shall I keep going? We've done seven, but I haven't got out of bed yet. I won't tell you what my wife's wearing, because that's none of your business. But we could, the brands go on and on and on and on. And in marketing terms, and this is one that I do believe in, there are really only ever two customers. Those that are born to your brand, and those that you steal from the competition. So if you go to, depending upon your age, either your children's or your parents' house this evening, or any time in the next week, open up their pantry. Look at their sugar and their flour. If it's the same brand as you, you're a good parent. If it's a different brand as you, you have failed. <laughs> and we need to look at every single business like that because there's hardly anything in the world that is already being sold. We're just trying to sell it better. And the amount of people that come into my studios and say, Keith, I've got a new sprocket and it is the world's best, it's unbelievable. And some of the things that they try and sell to me, let alone the market, are so unpalatable that I can't work with them. And I do like to make money as well. So, marketing is transactions. That's what we need to think about. What will it take to get the person that has heard your message and is interested in your product to purchase? I almost guarantee, I don't know everyone's business here, but I almost guarantee but what it takes to get them to purchase is at least twice as much as it should be. You must meet the criteria. Price, convenience, location. There are five and I'm only giving you three. But you can look them up on Google and find the other two. And then you need to make sure that your product is easy to purchase and goes through and satisfies all of that criteria. So this is the money shot, basically. We've sent the message, we've made the transaction really simple, attractive, affordable, convenient. There was four in there, if you're quick. Now we get to what is a key point of any organization's structure. And that is the option when people buy from you to do one of two things. You can take the money and you can run, or you can look at it as the start of a beautiful relationship. How many of your current customers or clients are seen, or do you see, as the first purchase being the end of the road, or the first purchase as the start of the road? Who's for end of the road? Who's for start of the road? Who's got a customer relationship management plan? Who's got some other form of being in touch with their customers? Who can honestly say, that if their customer was their wife, they would still be married. <laughs> we just don't treat them well enough, do we? So this is public relations. This is the art of MTR. Pretty simple. It's whatever we can do to generate a relationship. Man walks into a bar. Goes up to the first girl that he sees. Says, excuse me, I'd like to take you home. Ravage you, make love to you for 14 hours. She unsurprisingly says no. Man gets drunk, falls asleep in the corner. Other man walks into the bar, sits down on his own, surveys all of the people in the bar, chooses the person that suits his physical attributes most, chats to her, finds out a bit about her, puts her in a taxi at the end of the night, gives her his phone number, sends flowers the next day, invites her out for dinner a week later. Other man still asleep in the corner of the bar. What does your business do? Does it rape and pillage? Or does it seduce? The relationship part 
of when you first get that transaction, when they actually purchase from you, that point is so crucial. You must think about seduction. If we did to our customers, sorry, if we did to our partners what we do to our customers, the divorce rates would go up astronomically and immediately. Do you agree? Anyone feeling any tangible? Anyone with a little bit of sweat that's running down the back of their spine? Is it just me? Is it hot in here? And this is how they work together. We need a balance. If you work with an advertising agency, you will not get a balance. They want their income, I understand that. And they're interested in the message only. Who looks after the transaction? Who's got an internal marketing department? Who does the marketing themselves? Who's got a marketing degree? So a couple of people wasted their lives, but that's okay. <laughs> and then there's the relationship side. Who's ever looked at the business and said, we need to develop more relationships? Good. Yeah. And it's easy when you decide that that's what you want to do. Do you agree? And who's ever gone back to their database for one reason or another? I've got a client who sells toilets. It's a pretty good gig. It took me ages to get it. It's not true. They don't just sell toilets. They sell the little blue capsules that go in them. Sorry, ladies, you'll need to just bear with me here. They're a little blue capsule. It's in toilets. We call them targets. And that's apparently what they're there for. And this person that sells toilets, he phoned me only a couple of weeks ago and he said, Keith, here's a friend of mine. He said, Keith, I've got this fantastic campaign. You know all of those people on our database that we lost over the last four years because we weren't working with you and our marketing was awful? I said, oh, yes, Richard, I do. He said, well, I think what we should do is a campaign where we apologize to them and see if we can get them back again. I said, right. Richard, I haven't slept with your wife, but I'm happy to do that and that's what it takes because you've got about as much chance as I have be about as happy at the end of it as I am. You can't go back to clients or customers that have left you, apologise and expect them to come back again. Do you agree? Who's got an ex-wife or husband? <laughs> come on. Your boss rate's much higher than that. Yeah. And you may even look on them fondly. I don't, personally, but you may. But there's no way that you could get back, really, is there? That time has passed. And it's the same with your customers or clients. Once you've left them out of the relationship loop, you won't get them back again. So let's have a quick look on how you can apply this yourself. Step one, review your business. Go back to the office or go into the office or wherever it is that you work and look at your business. But look at it from the customer's point of view. What messages do you send? One of the most powerful things that you can do is to get all of your marketing materials, put them on a, a, um, a large desk or table, and review them. What messages are they sending? What materials are you using? Are they convincing? Also look at how many steps there are in the purchase process. How difficult is it to buy from you? And then what are you doing at the moment that encourages repeat business? Not just one-off sales. Secondly, look at what improvements can be made. Can you make more messages? Can you make your transactions easier? Can you improve your relationships? Adjust and evaluate. Work out what needs to change and then make sure that you're in tune to know what is and does and can change. And look for continual improvement. Not just a one-off hit from here, but continual improvement. An improvement that you can sustain for a long time as well. So, pretty simple stuff, do you agree? There's one thing that we need to do, just to make all of this cement itself in your mind. Otherwise you'll go away from here saying, nice shoes, can't remember what he was saying. So I wonder if you'd do me a favour please and just stand up. And if you wouldn't mind, just putting your right hand in the air. And your left hand on your heart, wherever that may be, and recite after me. Marketing.
writing is dead. Long live MTR. Give yourself a round of applause. Thank you. selfish unfortunately they told me what you do and we've got this philosophy that I, I'm willing to give to you for nothing if you promise not to hand it on to anyone else is that a deal? Okay. don't tell me what you do tell me what you can do for me that's what's wrong with those cards but I will clean them up after I apologise for them.